Hello everyone, my name is Leslie Norman and I'm the curator at the Pitt Meadows Museum and Archives. This past February was Heritage Month in British Columbia and the theme, Where Do You Find Heritage, is what inspired us to make this video. So at the museum we find heritage throughout Pitt Meadows, but in particular at our two sites, the General Store in the Old Hoffman and Sun Machine Shop. And today, where we're going to find some heritage, is here with our new Annette Code room. Annette Code, you ask, who was she? Well, above us, we have Annette. And to learn more, you need to step into the room. Who was Annette Code? Well, she was a longtime member of this community and an active volunteer. Annette was a long-time resident of Pitt Meadows, becoming officially ensconced in the community after marrying Gordon in 1969. She was a tenacious, to-the-point woman who was involved in the community on so many levels, from Highland Park School PAC, as a school board 42 trustee, as a Pitt Meadows Day volunteer, and, most importantly, as a longtime museum volunteer and Museum Society board member and president. In that capacity, she guided the museum through our move to the General Store site and in our acquisition of the Hoffman and Son site. So great was her impact on the community, she was a winner of the Citizen of the Year Award. As a young mother, and on occasion, she brought her daughter, Michelle, to volunteer with her at the former museum sites. And many years later, as a grandmother, she brought her granddaughters, Amy and Lainey, to our Museum Sunday's children's programs. While they played, she handled the greeting of visitors. She was always there for this curator to help out from the first day she interviewed me for the job and through the moves spe and special events such as Heritage Teas and Pitt Meadows Day. She was always there to volunteer at Heritage Thursdays for Children and most importantly to help me, the curator, make connections and learn the history of this amazing community. And that loved her family, her many friends and her community, the museum and the people, both staff and volunteers who worked here since 1980 and helped build it into what it is today. She was also a big fan of Christmas and donated many, many items for our trees here in the building. This room reflects her passion and was developed in part with a wealth of donations made in her name after she passed away in July 2017. It was once a dark and cold space, but it is now bright, filled with light, and with exhibits about children and Pitt Meadows Day and happiness. And at Christmas time, it will have all the trimmings including the items that Annette gave for our trees. They were all there in 2020, but COVID made it a well-kept secret. Well, and now for a bit of a look around the room, and starting with the area that is the highlight, the Miss Pitt Meadows Day case. Up in this case, you can actually see a crown. That was the first crown for the first and only May Queen for Pitt Meadows. The name was Isabel Sharp. She also had a sash when she was a former queen that came back to Pitt Meadows in 1964 for a reunion event. This was given to us by the Hardy family just this past year, 2020. Up on the wall, we actually have a photo of Isabel herself. She's standing on the left of Jack Grant, who was the organizer of the event in 1938. There she's the past queen, the past May queen, and to Jack Grant's right is Anne Anderson, who became the very first Miss Pitt Meadows in 1938. We have one other Miss Pitt Meadows in this room, and it's actually a little girl called Rebecca Capass, and she was the 1947 Miss Pitt Meadows. She returned as the past queen, but not for five years due to the fact there was a hiatus in the event started by the 1948 flood in Pitt Meadows. By the time she returned to be past queen, she was actually a young adult and much taller. 
In this room as well is a car in Oregon, a Canadian-made car in Oregon, that was in the building, in this room, in the 1930s into the early 1950s, when the Struthers family sold and left the business. They took the organ with them. But when we moved in here in 1998, they heard that it was going to become a museum, and they brought it back and helped us ensconce it in the very room it started out its history in. No longer plays, but it's a beautiful addition to the building. On the wall across the room from our Miss Pitt Meadows day case is our brand new dolls exhibit, encompassing only a small fraction of what we have in our collection. And one of her favorites is our Barbara Ann Scott doll up on the top shelf. Go to Google and look her up and you can learn more about the history of Olympic figure skating in this country. Along the base of the case, we also have a very small assortment from our large collection of children's annuals that we've been collecting at the museum since the 1990s. We're not actually finished with the room. There are still a few things to attend to, including getting some new blinds on our south-facing windows with the look towards reducing the harmful UV rays that come in and actually can bleach out floors and artifacts. We'll be looking into that before we move our building to the new site. And we've been looking after other things such as restoring the ceilings in the room and replacing the fireplace after we've moved. So when the COVID pandemic is finally over and the museum can return to its normal operations, and we hope this is before Christmas 2021 and certainly before the move of the buildings, we will have all our hands-on items for children back in this area, including games and music and other activities. And we really want people to get back into the building so that they too can enjoy the warmth of this very special room. In the meantime, we're still open for visitations, but in a socially distanced manner and definitely with your mask on. Please stay calm, stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Do you need a cameo or something?